everyone. This video will demonstrate how to properly mix and place your IRM restorations. IRM stands for Intermediate Restorative Material. It's a great way to temporarily fill or restore a tooth. It is a powder liquid combination. It contains eugenol and eugenol is made from clove oil. Make sure your patient does not have an allergy to eugenol or any of the other ingredients in the material before using it. One other precaution with eugenol, it is not compatible with resins. Eugenol can prevent the hardening or setting of resin materials. So do not use IRM as a base under a restorative procedure that uses a resin cement or a resin polymer filling. My basic setup, Woodson spatula is what I need. I have a measuring device here. Use the proper measuring scoop for your material. Fluff your powder. So we're following manufacturer's instructions. This one says to fluff your powder. And when we're dispensing dental materials, we always dispense powder first. So you have a light, fluffy scoop. Slide the excess off with your spatula. Place it on your paper mixing pad. I do know a lot of offices, they just pour some out and mix to the proper consistency. When you're starting out, use the measurements. I do always place a little extra powder out. That'll be handy when it comes time to placing the restoration. It helps to prevent the material from sticking. Swirl your liquid. That just mixes the different components. This is similar to a medicine dropper. Make sure you hold it vertical and you want one full drop away from your powder. It's very important to let the drop fall to the surface of your mixing pad. Sometimes I've seen assistants do this where they have it at an angle and they touch the pad. That gives you a very different size drop. I'll bring it up a little closer. So this one up here, I let the drop fall onto the mixing pad to get the proper dosage. Here, if I touch the tip to the mixing pad, I get a much smaller amount of liquid. So hold it vertical and let it fall on to your mixing pad. Since I don't need this extra liquid, I'm going to wipe it away. Your mixing time you have a full minute to mix and we mix in increments. I'll take my powder and separate it. You want to mix half of your powder into the liquid for 15 seconds and then keep adding in two or three increments, mixing each one for 15 seconds until it's the proper consistency. To make this a little easier, I'm just removing it from the tray, otherwise my spatula would hit the edge. And I always like to have a, a firm grip on my mixing pad. We're going to mix or spatulate very firmly. We get a stiff material and you want to flex your spatula. And that takes some pressure. So I hold my mixing pad and I'll start the mix. Half the powder goes in incorporate it, use both sides of your spatula within 15 seconds, add some more, mix this for 15 seconds, really flex that spatula, add some more. So the proper consistency is quite thick. 
if you just do a light stirring, you won't get good incorporation of the powder into the liquid. This is looking pretty good. And I've definitely mixed within my limit. So it's a good consistency, it's not too sticky. And I can roll it into a ball or a rope. I prefer a rope shape. So I did not use all of my powder. That's okay, mix it to the proper consistency. A lot of different things can change the consistency of your IRM. Wipe off your spatula so it doesn't set. Just some alcohol will take care of your spatula. So I'm gonna keep this in a rope shape. If it sticks to your finger, if you notice it really being sticky, add a little more powder. Manufacturer says it's okay to add more powder if it's too sticky, and it's okay to add a little more liquid if it's too dry and crumbly. All right, we are placing the IRM on tooth number 19. It has an MO preparation. I like to dip my Woodson into the powder. Let me just slide this away. And that will help prevent the material from sticking to your instrument. Pick it up with the paddle end of your Woodson and deliver it into the preparation. I'll dip the condensing end for the same purpose to prevent it from sticking. And then I can pack the material into the prepared tooth. We have an initial set time of five minutes that starts from your mixing time. So if it takes you a minute to mix and about a minute or so to pack it into the tooth, you're then looking at a three minute initial set time. Other ways to easily compress this into the preparation is dip your finger in the powder and you can press the restoration into place. So I will center this a little closer. And before it sets, let's get some anatomy back into this restoration. So one mistake I see new assistants do is they just overfill this. They leave it too high really bulky, but what we have to do is we have to get the anatomy back into the tooth. So once it hardens, the patient can still function with this restoration. Now, intermediate restorative material is not a permanent restoration. It's meant to help the patient get by until a permanent restoration can be placed. The nice thing about IRM, eugenol is a sedative material. It helps to soothe irritated pulp. So if someone comes in with a toothache, and if the doctor doesn't really see an abscess or any reason to really start a root canal procedure, they can open up the tooth and place this IRM. If the tooth settles down, it may have just had a case of reversible pulpitis. If that's the case, they can then decide on a permanent restoration. If the tooth doesn't settle down, it's irreversible pulpitis and they would need more extensive treatment. So carve some anatomy back into your filling material before it sets. There is always opportunity to fix it once it hardens, but it's easier to do while it's still in this malleable, flexible state. Other reasons to go with an IRM after a root canal procedure, you need to close that access point, that opening, and 
they'll do that with IRM or some other intermediate material like Cavit or Firmidin. Or if someone doesn't have the financial means to go through with a permanent restoration right away, the doctor can place this or the assistant can place this in some states, including Georgia, which is where I teach, um, the assistant can place this as long as it's delegated by the dentist. And the reason for that is it's easily reversible. And that's what you'll find in most dental practice acts is if the procedure is easily reversible, it can be delegated to the dental assistant. The post-op instructions for your patient. When they receive a temporary restoration, let them know it's temporary. It's not meant to last very long. No longer than one year, but ideally within a few weeks to a few months, we'd like to see them back to remove it and place a final restoration. They have to be careful with this because it is meant to come out at a future point. They need to avoid hard foods that could break it or sticky foods that could pull it out. So we'll wait for the initial set period, We've got just a couple of minutes to go, and we'll remove the matrix band. But you do want to wait for that initial set, otherwise it will stick to the band and you'll end up pulling the restoration out along with the band. After our initial set, we can then remove the matrix band. Always keep your finger over the occlusal surface of the band and remove the retainer first. Loosen that outer knob that will release the spindle from that vice box and just pull the retainer away. Next item to be removed is the wedge. I'll take this cotton roll out. Use your cotton pliers to remove the wedge. And then carefully remove your band. For this, we like to lift up on the side that does not have the restoration. Now, if you have an MOD, I mean, just pick a side. But if it's not an MOD, pick up the side that does not have the restoration first. And usually this one stays in place. And then take a look at your restoration before you pull the band out. Make sure it doesn't stick to your band before you try to remove it. If you waited for the initial set, you should be fine. And then you can lift this up. If you slide it out, be very careful. These bands are sharp. You don't want to lacerate or cut the patient's soft tissue. So lift up. And we can do a bite check. Use your articulating paper and forceps. Have the patient tap and chew. And slide their teeth around. And then we check. If you get any blue spots or any marking paper spots on the filling itself, it means it's too high. If the filling is too high, the patient has um, a higher chance of breaking the filling or injuring their tooth. Here the blue spots are on the natural tooth anatomy, on the cusps, and I don't see anything on the restoration itself. So this looks okay for the occlusion. If you do need to adjust your occlusion after it's set, use a round burr. Check your State Dental Practice Act to make sure that's something the assistant can do. In many states, the doctor has to do the adjustments with the hand pieces. Since this is an interproximal restoration, check your interproximal space. Make sure you don't have any material stuck between there and use some floss to ensure you still have a decent 
contact. Now these don't have to be perfect. They're meant to come out. This is not a permanent restoration. Let's use some floss, snap it in place, and slide it out. And that will help take care of any crumbs of material that might be stuck interproximally. Once it's placed, you can you know, give a courtesy removal of the articulating paper spots and give your patient those post-op instructions. Make sure they know they need to come back to your office for a permanent restoration in the future. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful.